Okay. So for those of you who attended the user day conference, you'll find this presentation to be um, somewhat identical, actually. <laughs> so uh, if you saw the presentation last year, uh, basically the conclusion we were looking at was programming to verbs is hard, doing it at all. Programming to verbs well is very hard. And what a lot of people just want is fast sockets. So this is one approach. Um, SMCR and extended sockets are two other approaches. The general solution for our sockets, um, just refresh your memory, it sits in user space. It's part of the RDMACM, uh, so it's part of that package. It does do kernel bypass. There is a preload library that's included, so the preload library is part of the, the libRDMACM package. Uh, it's built and installed separately. That allows some existing applications to run. So I want to look at was basically what role was I searching for with our sockets? Um, kind of where is it at and what are its limitations? What approach I'm taking in terms of trying to get our socket performance to be completely on par with uh, native verb applications? Uh, so for some applications, it's actually on par or, or better depending on what the app is actually doing. Uh, but there is a gap there um, because of memory copies. And what are the future features? So what have I done since last year, since when I presented? Um, and where do I see needs still existing uh, for future development? Overall, there was very strong interest. Um, so after I presented, uh, several hundred people, or at least a couple hundred people actually went and, and looked at the video uh, of the presentation last year. I received a lot of emails uh, from our sockets. And I even see our sockets on slides that I don't create, so at least somebody likes it. Its primary focus uh, originally was developed for basically MPI and HPC applications. Um, so I've run it with MPI, uh, Intel MPI and OSU MPI. Uh, I've run it with Hadoop. I've run it with uh, VSFTP. Um, that's one you probably don't actually want to use. but So I, I've tried it with several different applications, um, but starting with, with basically the HPC apps. Uh, since then, I, I have added support for UDP. So it does do datagram support now. And it does provide a little bit of support for applications which call Fork. So Fork is, is really the problem child with RDMA, but it does do some support uh, of apps which, which do that depending on what the apps are doing with the Fork call. So goal going forward is to continue to increase the number of apps. Uh, basically, this comes down to somebody needs to just run the app, tell me if it works or not, and if it doesn't, if they can tell me why it doesn't work. Uh, typically, what I find with apps is they, it either makes a function call, so this is with existing apps, they makes a function call that I don't intercept with the preload library, uh, or they set a socket option that I don't support yet. So I kind of do those basically as an as-need basis because I don't know how much uh, the apps are really going to need. And my other goal is to decrease that performance gap, which I'll get to in just a uh, couple minutes. And generally, our sockets provides around 90, 95% of the, the performance, basically raw performance uh, for micro benchmarks uh, relative to a native application. And my, my priority is performance. Um, so this will be a little bit different than what, like the example the SMCR, which is more focused on compatibility. So I'm willing to give up some compatibility uh, in order to maintain the performance it can provide. So this role, I also want to extend where I can take our sockets uh, in terms of both the performance and what applications it provides. Um, when I look at other hardware interfaces, I actually had somebody come up to me, um, I guess on Sunday. Uh, yes, I, I do have at least plans, I don't know when, uh, to try to look at other hardware interfaces. So, uh, so verbs is one hardware interface. Um, obviously, we looked at extending verbs. And do those extensions provide additional benefits that we can take advantage of? Or are there other optimizations, for example, um, PSM, which is a tag matching based interface. Uh, so that interface works best with Intel TrueScale hardware. Uh, and since I work for Intel, there's a push to have our sockets work well with Intel hardware. Um, so looking at all these other interfaces, um, can we support those as well? In terms of other devices, it does support InfiniBand. Um, it should support Rocky. Uh, iWarp support, I actually have the patches available. Um, so I've, I've written the iWarp support. What I don't have is iWarp hardware to test it. Uh, but the iWarp support, I'm expecting I'll have that available probably within days, if not at least you know, a couple of weeks. Uh, 
Uh, it should be able to support iWork devices. And it has been extended to other platforms. Uh, so that actually wasn't my work. Some, I helped somebody, but somebody else actually took the RSocket code, uh, found it useful enough that they did port it to Windows, and it's part of the Windows uh, Open Fabric stack. And that plugs in as a, a basically a WinSock provider on Windows. So in terms of the performance, um, so I, I did add there are RDMA specific options uh, to set SOC op, which allows me to control stuff like inline data size, uh, size of the send queue, receive queue. Now I tried to pick defaults that worked well, uh, basically provided very good latency, very good bandwidth, but minimize the memory footprint. Um, then I have some configuration files, so if an application can't actually make these calls, for example, using a preload library, uh, an administrator can create these configuration files to override some of the defaults. Uh, and this has been useful for somebody tried to run our sockets over a WAN, and the latency was such that by the, the default, I only allocate like 128K buffer, uh, and that wasn't enough to fill uh, the bandwidth on a WAN. So they needed a much larger buffer in order to actually fill, uh, to get the performance out of running this over a WAN. <clears throat> Uh, for natural extensions, so I mentioned some of this last year, um, adding some additional calls. Uh, these are specific to our sockets, so uh, IO map, um, IO write, IO read. Last year, I think I called these put and get. Um, so I, I have implemented, for example, the IO map, unmap, and IO write calls. Uh, IO map basically is a, a basic memory registration type call. So that maps to a memory registration, but the user gets to specify uh, essentially the R key or what address they want that, that buffer accessible through. And then the IO write call goes directly to that buffer. So using this, an application can, can basically register memory. They don't have to exchange any R keys. That's just, it's done automatically by the R socket protocol. And the remote side just needs to be able to specify uh, an address of a buffer, um, which could be known and basically compiled into the application uh, in order to transfer data to it. Uh, IO read is uh, another one I haven't implemented that yet because uh, IO read is really only useful if you have a synchronous IO or it needs to be a, a completely blocking call. Which means the last piece is uh, support for asynchronous IO. A lot of people for the past day or so have mentioned they really need asynchronous IO. However, Linux doesn't really define an asynchronous interface for sockets. Um, so. I expect at some point I'll get to that. It's just a matter of when and what that ends up looking like. So the top two are mostly done. The bottom one is, is still open. So in terms of the future, uh, I need to have real keep alive support. Um, I work support I mentioned. Uh, in terms of UDP, I know that multicast is missing, uh, but there are applications which desire multicast support. For compatibility, I want to be able to extend uh, socket options as needed, um, add this direct read capability. Uh, I, for example, even with blocking read, um, sorry, these screens end up being off. It confuses me. So even with blocking uh, IO read calls, I think something like Shamem may be able to take advantage of that. Um, and I also need native IB addressing. Uh, so this is talk yesterday, the scalable SA is going to end up trying to use this, so we, we want to be able to have this native addressing and avoid scalability issues trying to always uh, go through the IP stack to, to do the ARP protocols. For more full compatibility, we really need a, my opinion is we need a, a kernel-based solution. Uh, and we've had discussions with IBM, so I've had several discussions with IBM over, over several weeks about can we get, uh, for example, our sockets and an SMCR to try to interoperate. So we have protocols that can support high performance, but also support full compatibility where needed. We're needed. Uh, and that's just kind of highlighting the ones that were, uh, hopefully will be available soon, at least those features. And then Jerry will come in here and step in for the, the SMCR. So what are the challenges? Obviously the socket, my R socket is uh, not an FD, but a real socket is. So that means anything you pass an FD into, if you're running an existing app, I need to intercept that call. Um, so dupe, fstat, those were calls I had to intercept based on applications, uh, one of the apps I was trying to run. Uh, ePoll is a problem. Uh, so ePoll is fairly complex. Um, so to get performance, I need to intercept all the ePoll calls uh, and then basically create an entire user space implementation of what ePoll does. Uh, so 
for apps that do ePoll, um, if they provide an option not to use ePoll, that's my preference, but um, that's work I know that needs to be done. And then the other troublesome call is uh, really change root. Uh, so this is like VSFTP uses a change root call. Uh, so that's problem uh, for the RDMA stack in general. Um, it can't really easily support change root without some sort of changes to uh, at least the, the RDMA CM portion of it. Uh, and then obviously fork I can do somewhat, uh, depends on what the app is doing with the fork call. <clears throat> 